Almost everyone agrees that dinosaurs evolved millions of years ago. Some even say those who doubt this are ignorant about the science of dinosaurs. But we found evidence that seems to fit just the opposite perspective, that dinosaurs were created only thousands of years ago. Four lines of evidence from dinosaur fossils support creation better than evolution. Together, these support the biblical framework that dinosaurs were spontaneously created on the sixth day of creation just thousands of years ago, and they were quickly buried in Noah's flood about 4,300 years ago. Briefly, the theory of evolution claims that dinosaurs lived in an era that started about 220 million years ago and ended about 65 million years ago. Though estimates vary, some evolutionary sources use basic anatomy to distill the hundreds of dinosaur species down to as few as 50 fundamental types. Although we don't know for sure because we can't observe live dinosaurs, some estimate more than 50 interfertile kinds, but no more than 85. The biblical model holds that God instantaneously created these basic dinosaur kinds as land or swamp-dwelling, air-breathing animals about 6,000 years ago. Then, according to the Bible, God and Noah ushered one male and female from each of these 50 to 85 kinds into Noah's Ark. The cataclysmic, year-long flood that destroyed the earth about 4,300 years ago, according to the Bible's chronological data, wiped out all the dinosaurs and other animals not on board the ark. Possibly dinosaurs were better suited in size and design to the very different version of earth that existed before the flood. Dinosaurs that descended from the ark's inhabitants eventually went extinct, possibly because food sources were scarce. Drastic Ice Age-related climate changes disrupted their early post-flood habits and human hunting. Some dinosaurs lived recently enough to linger as dragon legends that most people groups around the world still preserve today. Now, let's review four amazing lines of evidence about dinosaurs that better fit the biblical framework than other explanations. We'll look at the first two lines of evidence together, that secular evolutionary scientists have agreed on zero dinosaur ancestors, and the second one, that there are zero transitions. An ancestor should have some almost but not yet dinosaur features. For example, if dinosaurs, whose legs went straight down from the body, evolved from some lizard, whose legs straddled its body, then we should find plenty of ancestors with legs oriented almost straight down. A transition should have some features that look almost, but not quite yet, like a dinosaur kind. As a crazy example, if Triceratops evolved into Brachiosaurus, then we would expect to find fossils of creatures with lengthening necks and shrinking head crests. We reproduced this chart from a well-known book in dinosaur literature titled The Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs, published in association with the British Museum of Natural History. In small print at the bottom of the chart, it says, Tinted areas indicate solid fossil evidence. We put the tinted areas in yellow. The rest of the chart, in gray, shows the theoretical ideas about dinosaur ancestors and transitions in the dinosaur evolutionary tree. When you remove the theoretical gray lines, the imagined ancestors and transitions, all that remains are several individual dinosaur kinds. Further, by removing the long ages, we flatten the image. That brings all the dinosaur kinds together, matching the idea that they suddenly appeared together by creation on the sixth day of creation week. Does science support this flattening? In a moment, we'll investigate evidence that suggests these evolutionary time frames are completely wrong. Medical doctor Carl Werner, author of Evolution, the Grand Experiment, spent over 10 years visiting hundreds of museums around the world looking for fossil evidence of evolution. This photograph from a secular museum shows the total number of fossil specimens for each dinosaur kind. For example, it shows 78 T. rex fossil discoveries, 287 sauropods, and etc. But notice the common ancestor slot. It has a question mark because no fossils fit that category. Instead, each basic kind suddenly appeared on the Earth. Next, notice that all the supposed transitions between the various dinosaur kinds have a zero next to them. We haven't found a single in-between transition that evolutionists can agree on. It's almost like someone just miraculously put dinosaurs here on Earth, 
each to reproduce after its own kind, just like the Bible says. Leaning dinosaur expert Dr. Wiseample has published several books on dinosaurs. He wrote this about dinosaur ancestors, quote, from my reading of the fossil record of dinosaurs, no direct ancestors have been discovered for any dinosaur species. Alas, my list of dinosaurian ancestors is an empty one. End of quote. While we could show that there are literally zero transitions between dinosaurs of every kind, we'll look at just one kind of extinct reptile, pterosaurs. Though technically not dinosaurs because they flew instead of walking, pterosaur fossils occur alongside dinosaur fossils. Dr. Viol, curator of the famous Jura Museum in Germany, said, quote, We know only little about the evolution of the pterosaurs. The ancestors are not known. And then he goes on to say, When the pterosaurs first appear in the geologic record, they were completely perfect. They were perfect pterosaurs. End of quote. Zooming in on the supposed transition shows us that Ankylosaurus and Ceratopsian supposedly share the same common ancestor. If this is true, if they both came from the same supposed ancestor, we'd expect perhaps millions of transitional design changes in the fossil record as they progressed into two totally different creatures. For example, it's quite obvious that these two animals have different tails, with the Ankylosaurus tail including a defensive weapon and the Triceratops having only a tail for balance. Only one of these creatures has armor structures on its back, and the other has offensive horns coupled with a shield for ramming, which were probably used when dominant males contested territory or during mating season, similar to how some animals do today. Scientists can't see extinct dinosaurs evolving today and find no firm fossil evidence that they ever evolved in the past. So why do so many continue to insist that dinosaurs evolved? Well, whatever the reason, it finds no basis in real, observable science. So what about the millions of years? Does science refute that too? Next, we'll take a look at the third line of evidence, the 14 short-lived dinosaur body materials still preserved in dinosaur bones and other parts like skin and horns. They should not be 65 million years old, but could be thousands of years old. In other words, the science of protein decay fits the Bible's timeline of dinosaurs rapidly buried in Noah's flood. The spring 2015 issue of the Creation Research Society Quarterly contains the scientific details supporting this presentation. Scientists convinced of biblical creation wrote the reports, but based them on hundreds of secular science journals that they cite. Secular scientists have published in peer-reviewed science journals their discoveries of each of these short-lived biological materials. Microbes don't make any of these, ruling out recent contamination. Blood vessels transport blood throughout the body. They include tiny capillaries through which water and chemicals exchange between blood and the tissues. Bones include capillaries and larger vessels. Small pancake-shaped cells loaded with long-lasting collagen protein comprise blood vessels. At least four scientific studies have published about blood vessels in dinosaur bones. Here's a partial list of the scientific journals that have revealed the dinosaur blood vessel findings. The Annals of Anatomy, Science, the leading journal of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and the Proceedings from the Royal Society B, which focuses on the biological sciences. Red blood cells, or erythrocytes, carry oxygen and collect carbon dioxide using hemoglobin protein, also found in dinosaur and other fossils. At least five peer-reviewed scientific journals have published examples of red blood cells in dinosaur and other fossil bones. Here's a partial list of scientific journals that have revealed the dinosaur blood vessel findings published in the prestigious journals we just mentioned. Hemoglobin protein contains iron and transports oxygen in red blood cells of most vertebrates. Some invertebrates, including certain insects and some worms, also use hemoglobin. In vertebrates, this amazing protein picks up oxygen from lungs or gills and carries it to the rest of the body's cells. Once there, oxygen fuels aerobic respiration that helps cells obtain energy. Scientific studies have reported, quote, striking evidence for the presence of the hemoglobin-derived peptides in the T. rex bone extract, end of quote. 
And here's a partial list of scientific journals that have revealed the dinosaur hemoglobin findings published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences and the journal Science. Secular scientists have described dinosaur proteins like hemoglobin, even though no experimental evidence supports the possibility that they can last even for a million years. But dinosaur bones hold more than just individual proteins. They sometimes retain whole cells and tissue remnants. An osteocyte is a bone cell that can live as long as the organism itself. Osteocytes constantly rebuild bones and regulate bone mass. And at least four scientific studies have established osteocytes in dinosaur bones. One study even found nucleic acid signatures consistent with ancient DNA right where the nucleus would have been in dinosaur osteocytes. And here's a partial list of scientific journals that have revealed the dinosaur bone cell findings published in the leading journal on bone research and several others. Another protein found in fossils that microbes don't make is called ovalbumin. It makes up 60 to 65 percent of the total protein in egg whites. Ovalbumin has been found in exceptionally preserved sauropod eggshells discovered in Patagonia, Argentina, a dig site that included skeletal remains and soft tissues of embryonic titanosaurid dinosaurs. These findings were reported in a peer-reviewed scientific journal. Chitin is a biochemical found in squid beaks and pens, arthropod exoskeletons, and certain fungi. If chitin was meant to last for millions of years, then it might have filled the Earth's surface as dead insects, krill, and other fungi left their remains over eons. Chitin is tough, but no known experiment supplies any reason to so much as suspect that it could last a million years, let alone hundreds of millions, as two scientific journal studies report in fossils. Fresh-looking, unmaterialized dinosaur bones have been found in multiple dig sites around the world. For example, a petroleum geologist working for Shell Oil Company discovered well-preserved bones in Alaska along the Colville River. The bones looked so fresh that he assumed these were recently deposited, perhaps belonging to a mammoth or a bison. Twenty years later, scientists recognized them as Edmontosaurus bones, a duck-billed dinosaur. A massive T. rex found in Montana has also revealed unfossilized bones. Mineralized bones can look darker than bone and typically feel quite heavy. Unmineralized bones retain their original structure, often including the tiny pore spaces in the spongy bone. Numerous studies published in scientific journals have described these fresh-looking dinosaur bones. Here's a partial list of six scientific journal articles that have revealed the unmineralized dinosaur bone findings. The last article, by Dr. Mary Schweitzer, includes an interesting section that states, quote, Finally, a two-part mechanism involving first cross-linking of molecular components and subsequent mineralization is proposed to explain the surprising presence of still soft elements in the fossil bone. These results suggest that present models of fossilization processes may be incomplete and that soft tissue elements may be more commonly preserved, even in older specimens than previously thought. Additionally, in many cases, osteocytes with defined nuclei are preserved and may represent an important source for informative molecular data." End of quote. Collagen is the main structural protein found in animal connective tissue. When boiled, Collagen turns into gelatin, showing its sensitivity to temperature. In 2007, scientists discovered collagen amino acid sequences from a T. rex fossil that was supposedly dated at 68 million years. Met with controversy, some suggested these proteins came from lab workers that accidentally got into the samples that were studied. Or perhaps, traces of ostrich bone proteins lingered in the equipment used in the study. Some even said, well, perhaps, quote, a bird died on top of the T-Rex excavation site, end of quote. However, three separate labs verified collagen in a separate dinosaur in 2009. Collagen decay experiments over the years have repeatedly demonstrated the maximum lifespan of this substance is 300,000 to 900,000 years at reasonable Earth's surface temperature. This shows that collagen protein should not last a million years, but could, in the absence of microbes, last for thousands of years. This evidence stands opposed to the millions of years that are usually assigned for dinosaur remnants, but confirms the biblical time frame. 
Here's a list of six scientific journal articles that have revealed the collagen finding in dinosaur bones, including the leading journals Science and Nature. One measured decay rate of DNA extracted from recently deposited fossil bird bones showed a half-life of 521 years. DNA decays quickly. It should have spontaneously decayed into smaller chemicals after several hundred thousand years, and it could only last that long if kept very cold. A few brave secular scientists have reported DNA structures from dinosaur bones, although they did not directly address the question of its age. In 2008, a group of paleontologists found exceptionally well-preserved Cetacosaurus remains in China and published images of dinosaur collagen fiber bundles. Other scientists published stunning skin color images from a separate Cetacosaurus, also from China, and found evidence of original, unaltered pigments including carotenoids and melanins. Still, other studies have reported scale skin and hemoglobin decay products still colored red, as were some of Mary Schweitzer's T-Rex and hadrosaurine samples in a Kansas mosasaur. FEX is a protein involved in bone mineralization in mammals. In 2013, Mary Schweitzer published detailed findings of the soft, transparent microstructures her team found in dinosaur bones. Because this discovery was so controversial, her team used advanced mass spectrometry techniques to prove that proteins such as actin, tubulin, and fex were found in osteocytes from two different dinosaurs, were not from some form of contamination, but original to the creature's remains where lab tests identified them. Bacteria do not make histine H4, but animals do. DNA wraps around it like a spool. Schweitzer and her team found this protein inside a hadrosaur femur found in the Hell Creek Formation in Montana, which bears an assigned age of 67 million years. It might last for thousands of years if kept sterile, but no evidence so much as hints that it could last for a million years. Our 13th body material is another protein. Keratin forms the main structural constituent of hair, feathers, hooves, claws, and horns. Some modern lizard skins contain tiny discs of keratin embedded in their scales. Researchers identified keratin protein in fossilized lizard skin scales from the Green River Formation that supposedly date to 50 million years ago. They explained its presence with a story about clay minerals attaching to the keratin to hold it in place for all that time. However, water would have to bring in the clay, and water helps rapidly degrade keratin. So the most scientifically responsible explanation should be the simplest one, that this fossil is thousands, not millions of years old. Elastin is a highly elastic protein found in connective tissue, skin, and bones. It helps body parts resume their shape after stretching or contracting, like when skin gets poked or pinched. Bacteria don't need it or make it, and elastin should not last millions of years even under the best preservation environment. Scientists reported finding this protein in a hadrosaur femur also found in the Hell Creek Formation in Montana. Because these findings are game changers, they're not without challenge by those who strongly hold to evolutionary ideas. Some of the rescuing devices that have been offered to attempt to explain these findings include iron in the blood acting as a preservative, the material being deposited from a bird carcass mixed with the fossil, laboratory contamination, and microbial biofilm, which we've already discussed. These explanations show a particular eagerness to attempt to dismiss the findings. Now, we've developed a simulated timeline to attempt to put these findings into perspective. Each of these 65 blue lines represents 1 million years. Showing 4,300 years on this chart is difficult, but it's represented by this tiny red arrow, which is 1 233rds of just one of these lines, or less than one half of 1% 1 of one of these lines. While this assumption can never be tested, some studies have estimated that the maximum shelf life of one of these 14 biomaterials to be between 300,000 and 900,000 years. Is it really possible that all 14 of these biomaterials lasted for 65 million years? A more plausible explanation is that they're more recent, just thousands of years, and were quickly sealed in Noah's flood. These materials lasting even 4,300 years is amazing. So fresh blood vessels, red blood cells, hemoglobin, 
osteocyte bone cells, ovalbumin, chitin, unfossilized bone, collagen, limited DNA, skin pigments, FEX, histone H4, keratin, and elastin. Is it scientifically responsible to assert that all of these biomaterials lasted millions upon millions of years? Or do they point to these creatures being rapidly buried and preserved in mud layers just thousands of years ago during Noah's flood? It certainly seems that these 14 fresh biomaterials, along with carbon-14, as we'll see next, fit a timescale of just thousands of years better than millions upon millions of years. In fact, it's amazing that these materials would last even thousands of years. Clearly a testament to the rapid burial caused by Noah's worldwide flood. Okay, so next we'll look at some of the evidence for carbon-14 and dinosaur bones. Secular scientists have not investigated this because evolution does not allow the possibility of recently deposited dinosaurs. Carbon-14 decays so fast that all of it would spontaneously turn into nitrogen-14 in less than 100,000 years. So why even look for it in samples that are supposed to be much older than this? Several carbon-14 dating studies have shown the presence of carbon-14 in dinosaur bones, other fossils, and earth materials. If dinosaur bones are supposed to be 100,000 years old, let alone 65 million years, not one atom of C14 should remain in any of them. But both secular and creation scientists have now published small amounts of C14 from ancient wood, coal, fish bones, lizard bones, ammonites, clams, diamonds, oil, marble, and dinosaur bone. It's as if the whole earth's surface is thousands, not millions of years old. But that means the Bible's history is correct, and that the evolutionary history leans more on imagination than observation. So we've seen four lines of evidence that firmly place dinosaurs within the Bible's timeline. First, evolution has zero dinosaur ancestor fossils. Second, evolution has zero transition fossils. Third, secular researchers have found over 14 different short-lived dinosaur biochemicals, including proteins, DNA, cells, and tissues. And fourth, Bible-believing scientists have described short-lived C14 in dinosaurs and other fossils. So what does this all mean? Dinosaurs confirm the Bible's record of recent creation of separately reproducing kinds and recent flooding across the whole world. If the Bible's right about history, then we have more confidence than ever in everything else it says. Thank you so much for joining us for this presentation.